A great example of this is how whistleblowers are seen worldwide. People like Snowden, who leaked the news of the massive surveillance state we live under to journalists, or Julian Assange of WikiLeaks, or Chelsea Manning, who revealed autocracies committed by the U.S. military, are not viewed as heroes or even brave for what they did. Their individualism is seen as traitorous by some. And yes, if you're an individualistic, free-thinking person, you'd say that those people have every right to disagree with the actions of the whistleblower. But if we look at what a surveillance state does to people, we'd think otherwise. If we are being watched at all times, or, or even the notion of that, we are going to act and behave completely differently in fear of judgment, shame, and punishment. The reason is, is that when we're in a state where we can be monitored, where we can be watched, our behavior changes dramatically. The range of behavioral options that we consider when we think we're being watched severely reduce. This is just a fact of human nature that has been recognized in social science and in literature and in religion and in virtually every field of discipline. There are dozens of psychological studies that prove that when somebody knows that they might be watched, the behavior they engage in is vastly more conformist and compliant. Human shame is a very powerful motivator, as is the desire to avoid it. And that's the reason why people, when they're in a state of being watched, make decisions not that are the byproduct of their own agency, but that are about the expectations that others have of them or the mandates of societal orthodoxy. One of the arguments used against Edward Snowden is that he could have sold these secrets to America's enemies and made a bunch of money. Wait, wouldn't that make him the winner of the individualistic capitalist game? Wouldn't, wouldn't he get the prize? As Glenn Greenwald put it so eloquently in his 2014 TED Talk. I've not seen yet. No, I consider that absurd and idiotic. Um, if you wanted to, um, and I know you're just playing devil's advocate, um, but uh, you know, if, you were, if you wanted to sell secrets to another country, which he could have done and become extremely rich doing so, the last thing you would do is take those secrets and give them to journalists and ask journalists to publish them because it makes those secrets worthless. People who want to enrich themselves do it secretly by selling secrets to the government. But I think there's one important point worth making, which is that accusation comes from people in the U.S. government, from people in the media who are loyalists to these various governments. And I think a lot of times when people make accusations like that about other people, oh, he can't really be doing this for print principled reasons, he must have some corrupt, nefarious reason, they're saying a lot more about themselves than they are the target of their accusations because those people, the ones who make that accusation, they themselves never act for any reason other than corrupt reasons. So they assume that everybody else is plagued by the same disease of soullessness as they are. Um, and so that's the assumption. And that's part of the collectivist mindset, to think that the world is as corrupt or benevolent as the individual.